Hey everyone, uh, my name is Varun. Uh, I'm a partner engineering manager here at Meta. Uh, I lead our AI developers uh, PE team. Um, and our main goal is to make sure that everybody who is using Llama, we make their life easier. So that's why I'm here. If you have any complaints, find us at the Meta desk and we're gonna solve it for you. So uh, to get started, um, as most of you might know, we launched Llama API. So we, at Meta, like, we made a big shift into how open source AI is going to change. We changed the landscape, right? Um, because as we open source these models, uh, at the time of Llama 2, uh, there were not many companies thinking about open source AI. Uh, it was primarily Meta that was actually driving this forward. Uh, since then, uh, it has become a catalyst to produce some of the great derivative models, great innovation within this space, like Numatron and many other models that are built by our partners, like NVIDIA, AMD, and all of these folks have done a fantastic job within this space. So we heard your feedback with the challenges of the open source models, uh, which is, hey, you gave us these models. They are too big. I can't deploy them. It is very hard to get it working the way you want it, and it is quite challenging. So though it is um, easy to work with the smaller models, working with the larger models gets a lot more harder. But at the same time, it, it is these larger models kind of like help you solve the complex problems that you're trying to do typically, right? So this is why we built the Llama API. So Llama API will include, the goal here for us is to make sure that all the latest models are available on the platform when we go live. So starting with Scott, Maverick, um, we have all the models available today for you to use. If you do not have access for whatever reason, please reach out. We're gonna make sure that you have access to the Llama API so that you can start using these models. Um, so we also have the 3.38B model, if you have observed here, uh, which uh, actually, speaking of which, we are working on the new smaller model, which Zach also mentioned during the LlamaCon. Uh, it's called Llama Lite. So we are also, that's gonna be something to look forward for uh, in the coming weeks, months, uh, we'll let you know. Um, so we have the 3.38B model, if you also want to play with it, uh, which is not open source, but it's available over here for you to play with. Um, to make it easy, um, so whenever you are already using existing providers and everything, uh, you are fixed to a certain platform, right? So it kind of makes it harder for you to move away from that. So that's why we made sure that we give you all the resources, such as the SDKs, uh, uh, OpenAI compatible SDK, like where you can just replace that with an API in your existing applications and still make it work. So out of the box, two lines of change, you can start using Llama API. Uh, as a part of the pre-release, we worked with a bunch of uh, close partners uh, who could give us uh, feedback about how Llama API is, and they have been quite successful uh, with the integrations, and we have got quite positive feedback from all these partners. Um, especially calling out the speed at which the inferencing has been working, um, the reliability of the system um, has been pretty solid. And this is like a good promising signal that we got which said that, hey, now let's start opening up access to more people so that everybody can use the Llama API. Uh, one quick example here, OpenNote. Uh, this was uh, one of our partners, early access partners. Uh, who built uh, the application for tutoring their students. It is live at 250 plus universities, and they have seen a huge uptick in the accuracy and the performance of their application as well as usage. So they were basically using the uh, Llama models for uh, building up teaching courses uh, for the students. So we are not gonna be stopping here with just inferencing. Right? Uh, what we are looking forward for here would also be um, something around like fine tuning and distillation. So by now, I think it's been like two to three years of the crazy hype within the AI space. Um, now, what most of you might have realized is, hey, just the 
regular model might not work for what I'm building. You might want to customize this, you might want to fine tune these models, you might want to quantize these models, et cetera. But then again, the compute is going to be some of the challenges that you might face, whether you're doing a full parameter fine tuning or LoRa or any of those things, right? So keeping that in mind, uh, we are also working, this is not available right now, but we're gonna be opening up access to everyone pretty soon, uh, where you would be able to fine tune the models on the platform with your own data set and run your own evals and then you can take that model and deploy it wherever you want. So this gives you the flexibility to choose, and Meta is going to take care of doing all the work for you in terms of compute, making sure that the best way to fine tune these models for you, and then you just take it and deploy it at scale in wherever cloud provider you have, or you can also deploy it within the platform. Um, so we also, uh, as we were building this, uh, we realized that the speed at which these tokens are generated are not sufficient for the agentic applications. So we, are, we started working with some of the fastest inferencing providers today in the industry. And we are, we are very happy to say that we will be opening up uh, all the developers to be able to use the Llama API through Cerebrus and Grok. So what this means is you implement it on the Llama API and you quickly add a attribute that says that, hey, I want to use the Cerebrus as my provider. I want to use Grok as my provider. So this will make it easy for you to switch between the different inference providers and get the speed that you're looking for. Now, for those who haven't been able to receive an email or not able to sign up already, uh, this would be the QR code for you to get started to get access to the Llama API. If you have any questions, always reach out. Okay, enough of Llama API. So the next one, this is, I'm super excited about this, right? Uh, because this is where the actual problems of a developer comes into play. So now, on a day-to-day -day development of your AI applications, uh, you kind of like realize that, hey, if I'm using a prompt here, but the same prompt I use somewhere else with a different LLM, it does not work the same way as expected. Or you're switching between one language model to the other language model, then, uh, or one version to the other version, then again you have some issues and you have to start working towards optimizing your prompts to make it work, right? So we saw that this to be the biggest friction for the adoption uh, when you're thinking about moving from one model to the other. And also the optimization came into play. Um, so we are introducing this tool. It is called as the Llama Prompt Ops tool. Uh, that will simply take your existing prompts that you're using, you pass it through the Llama Prompt Ops tool, and then it is going to give you an output of the prompts that is most efficiently works with the Llama models. This, this is quite powerful if you think about it, right? So just take OpenAI APIs or any closed source APIs that you're already using. It's like, oh, I switch it, I copy paste these tools, copy, sorry, you copy paste these prompts and you'll start using and you're like, oh, this, the model is not working as expected. OpenAI works better or cloud works better. But then guess what? Run this tool, migrate it, it gives you all the recommendations, and then you just change that to the updated prompts, and it should be working for you. So if you are using this within the hackathon and you're having any challenges or issues, always find us. Uh, we can always help you guys. We also open source this. It is really quick and easy to get started. Uh, by the way, this is not about just migrating from one LLM to other LLM. It can also help you with prompt optimizations, so something to keep in mind. Um, so here you can see that you start with your prompts, which is like your existing prompts. You provide the uh, path to, uh, sorry, the first one is a system prompt. The second one is your actual prompts. Then you have the model that you're choosing uh, as uh, for you to be helping you evaluate. And then the last one is how, what are the different ways in which you want to be doing the optimization. And that's it, and then you'll be able to get it up and running. So you can try it yourself. The prompt ops GitHub repo is live, uh, and you'll have a QR code at the end that you can try it yourself. 
Okay, so now you have migrated your prompts. And now, once you have migrated your prompts, then it's like, okay, you start using it, you realize that your data set matters. That, and now you want to start fine tuning it, right? So this is where the, some of the challenges that you have over here is, um, you might not have enough data relevant to your certain domain that you're working with. Healthcare, finance, uh, anything. Like if you try to take a specific topic, then you may or may not have enough data. Even if you have this data, you might not have this data in the format you would like it to have. And then you also have to put in effort to take this data set, massage this data set, and then eventually convert it to a format where you can start fine tuning it. Like this, these are like the typical steps that you kind of like take to uh, generate, fine tune, and get these data sets ready in place. So we created this tool, it's called as a synthetic data kit. Uh, this is again open sourced. It basically works in four steps. First thing is you ingest the data set in various different forms that is already available. PDFs, HTML, anything, right? And then you take this and you create these data sets in various different formats. Question answer pairs, DPO, and what this can help you is like, all you have to do is basically tell the tool this is how you want it to be, and the tool is going to take care of converting a PDF into a question answer pair, which you can take it and fine tune your model, right? And once these data sets are created, how do you validate that this data set is accurate? You need some kind of a judge, an LLM, that can evaluate these generated data sets. And that's where your LLM as a judge comes into play, and then eventually you choose the format in which you can be saving this data, and that's the last step of this process. So we took this tool and we actually kind of like uh, worked on improving uh, the tool calling functionality and also uh, improving our existing models. Um, so what we did is essentially, hold on, let me check, yes. So we took our existing model, um, which we evaluated it on tool calling. Uh, it was uh, somewhere really low in number. Um, and then we took this model, added chain of thought reasoning to this model, um, and then fine tuned it. And all of this was done using the synthetic data kit tool, which helped us get to the performance that you're seeing over here and beat the, um, the base models uh, that we published uh, or OSS, as a matter of fact. Synthetic data kit is again available on GitHub. Um, you would be able to uh, download it and use it as a PyPy package and run it. Um, and the last one I'm going to talk about is Llama cookbooks. So if you, we have a bunch of recipes that is already available and published. So if you go to our website, uh, llama.com and resources, uh, you will be able to see a list of getting started recipes uh, where you can think about like, hey, how do you get started using the model? How do you integrate with WhatsApp? How do you integrate with any other platform? All these examples are provided, including fine tuning examples and including quantizations. So if, if you're stuck with anything about like, hey, I want to add this new feature, I want to do fine tuning. There are libraries, there are things that's available which you can quickly get started using that. All right, that's it. And the last part is the key part, the QR codes. If you're looking for downloading any of these, you can find them here. And thanks for your time and happy hacking. <laughs>